Awesome. Works. Well, hello guys. Nice to meet you all here and um, I think for maybe all of us, front-end development is a pain. And uh, yesterday we went to Dead Sea and I dived and opened my eyes. <laughs> this is about for many years of development and uh, still uh, you're gonna love front-end with BAM, of course. Uh, my name is Vladimir and I'm a head of uh, BAM team and uh, here is my colleague. Uh, hi guys, my name is Yelena and I deal with all of our BAM community, which is big. We both work for Yandex, uh, that's uh, the largest search engine in Russia and we have uh, a lot of different services and more than uh, 6,000 employees. But we're going to talk about technology invented at Yandex, about BAM. And uh, I think uh, maybe some of you, sorry, I need to refresh it. And uh, that's all because we need to run it for the first time. Otherwise, we see the, all the bullets at the beginning. So, first of all, I think some of you may already know very basics of BAM and uh, I will uh, walk through them quickly. Then we will uh, show you the uh, hidden parts of BAM which we use at Yandex and mostly in uh, Russian-speaking countries. Uh, then we share the history, how it was invented and what we have today. And uh, show you how to start quickly with all that BAM. So, where all that pain of front-end development uh, came from. Uh, Douglas uh, in the morning covered some parts of it and mostly it's all because actually all these technologies were invented for different things than we actually use them now. And uh, I think all of you uh, feel the pain while uh, reading somebody else's code and even your own after vacation, yeah? How can you remember what was it all about? And uh, when you want to improve a piece of CSS, how can you be sure it won't ruin something else on a page? And uh, the biggest problem is all about reusing uh, your job. So you spend a lot of time writing code and then we need just the same piece on a new project. How can you be sure that you just copy paste it and it will work? I think it actually won't and uh, that's even hard to understand which parts to copy and paste to get it work. And uh, when you're trying to find these pieces uh, across your previous project, uh, have you ever uh, been in a situation when you uh, pasted something that looks not so useful now, but, well, just in case, maybe it's still useful? That's all how CSS works, yeah? And uh, even if you somehow managed to reuse your components uh, in a lot of projects, then one day you find that there was a bug in this common code. What to do now? And uh, you may find a library which solves a task you need now. But how can you include it to your current project? They have different APIs and there is nothing common between different libraries or frameworks. That's yet another pain. And even with all that hype around component approach, there is still no dependency management in CSS. Uh, let's go deeper. So, you may write this uh, tiny piece of CSS and then paste uh, a component to a page and all the links inside this component will be ruined. Who can say what will be the color of this spam? 
One. Green. <laughs> Not sure, yeah? Green. It will be green. Then, uh, will this uh, selector be applied to the sidebar? That's easy. And then you walk uh, through your cascade style sheets. Oops. But here nobody can render it inside your mind. That's just awful. And reading CSS, you can't tell which DOM nodes will be matched. Still, it's a tiny piece of code. And when you have a huge project with lots of pages and millions of visitors as we have at Yandex, will you be brave enough to just remove something useless? All will keep it, just in case. <laughs> we have a treatment for all these things at BAM, and it stands for block element and modifier. A block is a, an independent piece of interface. Uh, it's kind of a component in terms of web component specification. And elements are uh, smaller parts which are useless without their parent block. You may think of them as of shadow DOM uh, in web components. And modifiers uh, describe some slight differences between similar blocks. And, which is quite important, they can describe differences in states. <laughs> Having all these entities, we need a way to uh, somehow write code with them. So we use CSS classes to link BAM entities to DOM nodes. And uh, we use two underscores to tell element from block name and yet another underscore to separate modifiers. Modifiers can be boolean like this or key value pairs. Uh, so let's go quick through some of BAM principles. Uh, we use just classes, no tags or IDs for selectors. That's easy. We don't use CSS outside of blocks. So each time you need to style something, you should create a block. And um, we do it to have that reusable pieces, which we can uh, use on every project, on any page. So each block should be independent. And we avoid cascade. Yeah, even in cascade style sheets, we still avoid cascade. And why we have these rules? Uh, what if we need more than one menu on a page? How to guess which DOM nodes will be matched with this selector? And I think this piece looks quite fine. Yeah, but what if your project grows and now it's not so easy to tell. And here comes elements to the rescue. And with just this easy modification, you get treated from the cascade, from all this uncertainty. And uh, quite common task. You need to highlight current item on a, of a menu. And uh, still, it looks quite reasonable, yeah? But what if you need to add a bit different menu on the page? <coughs> so, following just these simple rules, you've got possibility to create independent blocks and uh, now you can be confident that none of them will uh, influence with others. And without Cascade, you can easily overwrite any block on your project site. So 
uh, you can use common components and don't touch the sources. You can just replace uh, any rules you need on a project site. And your code is now self-documented. You don't have all these digs without any semantic. You have uh, descriptive names. But that was the very basics. Now let's go to the real power of BAM. Having all these uh, chips, we can easily build uh, libraries of reusable components and uh, override them on project level, as I already said. Just because CSS works this way, we can uh, import all your components, CSS, and then import the CSS of your project. Uh, okay, this will work for CSS, but what about JavaScript? What about HTML? Can we use the same approach there? First of all, let's try to collect everything about a block in the same folder. So now we can easily find every part and when we try to reuse it, we can just copy the full folder. Everything will be inside. We can go even further and split blocks into elements and modifiers. So if we've got a block with optional modifiers or optional elements, we can use just the pieces we really need. And to continue, let's introduce one more term, BAM tree. That's an abstraction upon DOM tree. Because, uh, as Douglas said, actually DOM tree wasn't invented to create applications we develop every day. And as so, we need something for us. So, uh, you can compare it uh, with uh, using assembler instead of C++, for example. And uh, this abstraction gives you a possibility to use just blocks, elements, and modifiers instead of divs, spans, and other unsemantic stuff. Uh, looking through this uh, declaration of a page in BAM terms, you can uh, walk through a file system and collect the pieces you really need on a project. And as we don't try HTML since then, you can give absolute freedom to the developers who create uh, these reusable components to change markup. And then you may update your code without all these search and replace things like what you need when you try to update from previous version of Twitter Bootstrap, for example. And to have proper analogy for JavaScript, let's get back to the past, like this. I think uh, some of you may remember the times when there was no CSS at all. And that was quite handy and cool the time, because uh, you don't need to create multiple files use different technologies, everything in the same place, and quite and yeah. And then your project grows and grows, and thanks to declarative CSS, we are out of that hill. Uh, and uh, there is one important feature of CSS. We can match the same selector just writing a CSS below and overwrite any rule or add anything else. And it's fine, but what about JavaScript? What about HTML? JavaScript started almost the same way. We have function calls inside attributes on DOM nodes. Then we've got possibility to match any selector and get all the DOM nodes matched no matter how many they are on a page or how deep they are inside of DOM tree. And then we can call any methods on them, yeah? 
but what if in runtime we change a class and now there is there are two uh, blocks with class block on a page. CSS will be applied automatically, yeah? But what about JavaScript? What about this do something method? Uh, with BAM, we can use the same selector and uh, get all the blocks called block. And then we can uh, define which uh, methods should be uh, fired when any modifier will be set or removed. So we've got the same uh, as in CSS. You can change modifier in runtime, which means just to add or remove class actually. And then everything you need will be fired automatically. And as in CSS, you can just match the same selector again and overwrite any method or any property. Just write in JavaScript below. Okay, sounds reasonable and I think uh, that's again not something quite new for you, yeah? But what about HTML? Is the same possible for HTML? Let's first come over how uh, usual templates work. We've got some data and then we've got a piece of HTML with some placeholders and template engine will replace these placeholders with data. So we've got HTML again. And uh, when you need to change your markup, you need to walk through all, all these weather blocks and replace them. But with BAM, we don't use HTML. We have the same data and a BAM tree here in view variable. Then we declare a selector to find all these weather blocks in BAM tree and then set rules how to render final HTML. And as this is just JavaScript, we can render HTML on server side or in browser. And of course, we can select the same block again and replace any rule. We can change just tag, write in same selector below, or add attributes, change content, add any wrapper. So actually it works absolutely the same way as, for example, XSLT template engine. It's just declarative template engine. You may use anything you want, but the main idea is that you will get the same HTML at the end. And uh, that's the same idea that web components uh, are all about. They also use uh, semantic abstraction on top of HTML, but they still uh, need to mess it with old divs and spans. Uh, they also put all the front-end technology technologies together and uh, they also try to hide internals with the help of Shadow DOM. But again, we have some problems with privacy for that. And with BAM, we've got same thing but without HTML at all. And we also put everything together in the same folder and instead of Shadow DOM, we just use convention with that uh, namespace or block to hide all the elements inside. And of course, we have build process to collect all the blocks through file system to build bundles. And uh, there is no any semantic model uh, across different front-end technologies. And now, with BAM, we've got it. Just blocks, elements, and modifiers abstraction for each front-end te technology. And how will your development process look like with BAM? You've got that abstraction to think in terms of blocks instead of divs and spans. Uh, you split it into different files on file system to easily manipulate them and everything is declarative. 
So now you can change anything you want, just where you want it, without interfering with source code of libraries. So you can create these libraries to reuse. And now Elena will tell you how we get there and what we have today. Hi everyone. Um, uh, I'm so sorry that I have to, bro uh, to, bro to bring you back to the problems uh, that Vladimir was uh, starting uh, this presentation today. But I think it's also crucial to understand how uh, the technology uh, was created at the beginning and what it is now. Because there is a lot of technologies that appear every day and not all of them uh, you can find after a season uh, still growing up and uh, updating and developing. So from this uh, old piece of Yandex you can see all the problems that we had. And um, with most of these problems you are struggling every day. And um, even though we have all the modern tools in our hands, but uh, we were facing these problems uh, 10 years ago, when there was basically nothing to cure these problems. So we, uh, we had to create our own tool. And uh, we basically, 10 years ago, Yandex was just a long, uh, long list of uh, uh, HTML and a lot of cascade. So we like uh, the speed of rendering browsers. And we also, there was a naming, there was a nightmare because we had no naming convention and we had a lot of services and teams working on these services. So each team was creating their own names for basically the same thing. So at the end, it has no meaning at all. And then um, any interaction that we had with our code because of uh, manual editing was dangerous because uh, you had to support something and then you change something and ruin the whole project with a millions of users and then uh, supporting was a nightmare and uh, maintaining and adding new features and there was uh, no, st we were not talking about reuse um, a lot of code that we had at that time and this is basically how our uh, development process looked like back then 10 years ago so um, and uh, at that time we were uh, we had almost no JavaScript in our, uh, in our projects, but um, our designers made our interfaces uh, grow and uh, we had more and more interactions with users on our page, so we had to use more JavaScript and we had to use more and more technologies and it became even harder to support and to find anything in our code and to maintain. So, and who knows what was going on afterwards. And we were growing, we were expanding in terms of services, now we are 50 plus services and we grow in terms of people, uh, how many people working on our services, we were working in, not in one office in Moscow, but in different offices in different countries, we had to work remotely, we had to understand each other, we, uh, we were recognizing that we're talking with developers, uh, back-end, front-end, with our designers, with managers, about the same things, but using different terms, so we had to do something about this. Um, and then uh, these guys came, the one in the middle, he's, uh, his name is Vitaly, and he's standing right there. So he created them. Uh, uh, and also Sergei Birezhnoy, who is on the right, and he is leading uh, the interface uh, front-end development at Yandex Search in Moscow. So they together created something that was called independent blocks concept that later became BAM, you know. And yeah, this helped us to get rid of Cascade finally and speed up our rendering of our projects. We also get finally the unified naming convention, so our teams stopped of creating their own dictionary in every project. So we were encapsulating code and <coughs> we even later on uh, it was possible to reuse all the code base we created and now it's all stored in an uh, internal library called Lego, Lego library. So, and we have a separate team that maintains this library. And uh, our developers who work in our services, they can benefit from this because they got on their projects new code tested and uh, checked and they can concentrate on features and not writing similar code every day in every project. So, and later on, uh, after creating this uh, 
when file structure, we have to we, we could separate um, and structure our technologies. And now uh, on blockwise, and now blockwise we have not only CSS and JavaScript separately, but we have documentation, we have tests, and you may have anything you need there. So um, during this last two, ten years, BAM grew into something that is bigger than the methodology that is, by the way, tested in different uh, uh, different scale projects in small or big as Yandex. Um, it's now a huge meta library inside Yandex, the internal library. But we uh, develop our technology open source, so everything we could open source and possibly give for free to the community, we open source. So it's an open source technology with a wide community. And it's also something that we call platform to describe that inside we have methodology, we have tools and libraries all together, and you may use it separately as you want it, or you can use it all together. And it's also will not be dead tomorrow, or I don't know, uh, because it's almost 10 years working and we're still improving it and we still uh, follow, let's say, the tendencies and we see what's going on in the market and we use it ourselves, we bring it to the community and we make sure the community uses this and they also report us everything, what is going on with the technology in the world uh, that we have no idea because we work on young services and they are huge and not every company and every product is like this. So, and uh, that is funny enough that in Russian-speaking countries, uh, it then becomes something like a standard on the CD that you put, uh, if you want to get hired in Yandex or Mail.ru or some other companies, then you have to know BAM as well as HTML, CSS and JavaScript because they use it in their own projects and it's less, it's cheaper if you hire somebody who already knows how to use this. And <clears throat> And I think it's uh, also interesting to know who uh, is, development, is developing this technology and the people and uh, how the speaker before us said that everything is about people and we agree with this. Uh, we have a very amazing team that works on the technology and that uses this technology. Uh, at Yandex there is a separate division of 30 Contenders who work on the core technology and who maintains the Lego library that our services use. And then we have contenders from the services in Yandex who use Lego library in their projects and reports us bugs and I work in the core team. And also we have a wider community and this community is not only using this technology and reporting us bugs, this community is also um, open sourcing their parts of code because uh, the projects are different from company to company, from team to team and we um, cannot possibly know about everything so we know that the technology works in different kind of projects but how it works there, this is uh, from another part of the community we get this information and they possibly open source their libraries and their stuff that they make and Thanks to uh, these guys, you may recognize them from the pictures. They helped us a lot during the years that our team was small and had um, and wasn't speaking English at all. So and we had no English documentation. So they help, helped us a lot. They started to use it somehow, and they wrote a lot of uh, articles about uh, them and they about their products and projects where they use it, and they also. Um, we're talking on different conferences. So there is a lot of stuff you can find on internet about this. Even recently there was a rendering performance guide from Google where we have found the piece of piece about BAM. We were surprised and we were very, very thankful for this. And at the end of this presentation there is a lot of links so you can go and click and read everything. And there is a lot more results if you uh, look for it on the net in English and even more in Russian, of course. Um, in Russian-speaking countries, we moved during the last two years, we moved from talking on the conferences and writing articles into more coding sessions and meeting with our developers 
face to face and talking about their project, their problems, because it for us it's more information. If you come to the conference, you see a lot of people, but you basically interact with maybe 10, 15, and you have no idea what's going on in their project, so you uh, cannot possibly help them. So we moved to organizing our meetups, and this is uh, the photo from our meetup in St. Petersburg once. So we talk on the conferences, we write articles, documentation, we do meetups, and uh, we cannot help everyone on these meetups because not everyone can go to the cities where we make them, although we do this in Russia, in Ukraine, and other countries. So, sorry. <laughs> so we do webinars and we do hackathons recently, so a lot of stuff community helped us to make. And we consult some teams because, um, for instance, you're a big company, you already have a lot of technology and your manager decides why not to bring another one. So we can uh, possibly look at the code and look how your teams interact and maybe suggest something because we have a lot of experience and we face a lot of things internally in terms of technology and in terms of communication with people. It's also hard. You may recognize some avatars from that page and there is a lot of bloggers of the companies that use them. And uh, in Russian-speaking countries, they more use it as a platform than a methodology only. So how to start? You can start easy with uh, reading everything about the methodology and thinking about how to build the architecture our way or just start from refactoring your CSS. And also you can start with a platform and you have JavaScript framework, templating engine, libraries inside. In terms of libraries we have a lot but two maybe essential for you. One is called BAM Core, where you have all core technologies inside, but nothing about design. And the other one called BAM Components, and you have 20 more blocks there. It's basically everything you will ever need on your web page. So you can take open source library with the code and already build your project with your design. And also there is a lot of tools that open source, uh, from building tools to writing tests for blocks, and you can try it from project stuff. Or you can partially install it in your project because it's compatible with different technologies you already have. So read everything here, and there is a forum, so you can talk with developers that are using this in English, in Russian, and here is the link to this presentation, so it's the same as the name of the conference and them at the end. Uh, we are today, and we are very thankful that we see so many great people here coming and supporting this team in the first conference on front-end in Tel Aviv. And um, that's great that you help the environment and the technologies running in your region. And I think it's crucial for the development and for the future of what we do. So we, will, we are here for this two days and we are happy to help you if you have questions come to us and ask if you want us to show something like coding and talking about your projects. Come, do not hesitate, we help and we do everything we want possibly. So thank you so much for here.